What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go over the 12 basic functions that you absolutely need to know, especially if you're taking pre-calculus. Because in pre-calculus, we go over applying the transformations of a function, we go over graphing and solving piecewise functions. It's so important and so common that we revert back to the graphs of these 12 basic functions. Now, if you look in your textbook or you look on your notes, uh, even online, a lot of times you'll see 12 basic functions that are different than one, what I'm going to provide to you in this video. A lot of them include the logistic function and the step function, which is good. And I teach them and provide them to my students as well. But in this video, I want to go over the 12 basic functions that you are going to encounter the most. So I don't want to gloss over some of these functions just to include logistics and the step function, because these are the ones that we're actually going to work on. Now, you can definitely go ahead and take notes as you go through this video, but I also have a principal worksheet that you can go ahead and download anytime throughout this video. So therefore you can see exactly what these graphs are going to be. But let's go ahead and work through them really quickly. All I simply wanna do is introduce you to the graph as well as show you what the graph is going to look like. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is going to be the identity function. That is simply just going to be y is equal to x. So that function is our linear graph, as you can see, is going to go ahead and look like that. The next one is going to be the quadratic function. We spend so much time in algebra two dealing with the quadratic function, the U-shaped graph, right? It's very, very important. It comes up the most. I'd probably say out of all the functions, this is the one that you will need to make sure you're as comfortable with than anything else. Now, the step cousin or the step sister or step brother of the quadratic is going to be the absolute value function, which a lot of times revert to as the V-shaped graph. This again gets introduced in algebra two, but again, we, we use this a lot more in pre-calculus as well as in calculus. So understanding this graph and understanding the characteristics of it are going to be extremely important. Now, my favorite one, especially when I'm doing teaching inside the classroom, is going to be the square root function. And I don't know why, just a lot of students forget what the square root function comes looks for. But this is actually one of the most important ones to understand, because especially when we get into more complicated problems, especially in calculus, understanding the graph of the square root function is going to be critically important. Now, number five is not one that comes up a lot, but I feel like it comes up more than the logistics as well as the uh, as a step function. So I wanted to include it. And it's also really important, especially when we start talking about polynomials in pre-calculus, this is going to be what we call our cubic function. So y is equal to x cubed. A lot of times you also consider this like the snake graph. So it's really helpful to understand this, as I mentioned, once we get into polynomials. And then another one that, again, students just, they don't understand it. It's, it doesn't come up a lot, but I think it still comes up more than the step and the logistics function. And that is going to be the cube root function. So again, that is going to be actually the inverse of the cube function, just like the square root is the inverse of the um, quadratic function, which why did I not write in that in? That's going to be an x squared, and that's going to be a x. I'm sorry, that's going to be absolute value of x. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and fix that. So now you have all these. And again, if you want to go ahead and download, I actually have a printed sheet that I used to give to my students as part of their notes. You can go ahead and download it. It's absolutely free. It's a good thing just to always kind of keep and something you can always um, revert back to. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to number seven, which again is going to be one that students forget. Now the exponential function can be used as e to the x or you could use like two to the x. Um, it doesn't really matter what the base is. That's gonna affect the shape a little bit, but the main characteristics are always going to be the same as long as there's no transformation. So the exponential function is going to look like this. And again, just remember there is a nice little horizontal asymptote there at y is equal to zero. But students confuse the exponential graph with the logarithmic graph. Now, again, we could use ln of x, we could use log of x. Again, doesn't matter if the base is e, 5, 10, anything. The general shape of the graph is going to remain the same. And guess what? This is also going to be the inverse of our uh, exponential graph. So the logarithmic graph is going to look something like this. And this one is going to have a vertical asymptote um, at uh, x is going to equal to zero. Now, number nine is going to be the reciprocal graph. Again, this is something that we spend a lot of time in algebra two on, and it's gonna be something that's gonna be really, really important in pre-calculus as well as in calculus. So it's very, very important to know that, to make sure you understand this. This has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, and it's what actually we call a hyperbola. And so it's gonna look something like this. So again, this is a critically important one, especially once we start getting into more advanced um, problems in pre-calculus as well as in calculus. 
Number 10 is going to be, uh, ta -ta -ta, number 10 is going to be sine of X. So in pre-calculus, we, a lot of times we deal with the trigonometric functions at the, I kind of like the middle of the course. So I don't, I'm not going to get into the nuances of how to graph this and, uh, you know, we're not going to get characteristics. I just want to show you a rough sketch of what this graph looks like because it is completely different than what we have covered up to this point. So this graph is going to look something like this. And again, this is just going to be one period of this graph. This graph actually continues this same pattern infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. The next one, number 11, is going to be the cosine graph. So the cosine graph is going to look very, very similar to the sine graph. It is not the inverse, though, of that graph. There's actually a really, really um, cool relationship between these two graphs, but this one is first period is go, just going to look like this. And again, it's going to continue just like the sine graph. And the last one is going to be the tangent graph. And again, we're gonna spend a lot of time going through these individual graphs and going over the characteristics. And it's extremely important that you know these to solve these problems, to be able to graph these. I cannot tell you how many times when I'm working with my students and they are struggling with the problem, and I'm like, well, what does the graph look like? And they're like, I don't know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you got to know these. So if you did not download that worksheet, then please make sure you go ahead and download the worksheet. The tangent graph is going to look kind of like the cubic graph, but it's also going to have some asymptotes. And again, this pattern is going to repeat to the left and to the right. So again, guys, if you don't want to this chicken scratch kind of notes, you want something nice and printable, go ahead and do download um, it. Go ahead and download the sheet down below. Again, it's absolutely free. And if you found some value in this, then please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to know what the characteristics are of this function, such as like domain, range, increasing, decreasing intervals, boundness, um, X and Y intercepts, we're going to go over all that in the next video. Go ahead and check it out. Coming up now. Cheers.